managing your resources properly is probably the most important thing in the gacha game like Wedding Wave, especially at the launch of the game because that's when you have the least amount of resource to spare. You get 240 energy a day only and it's very important that you manage them wisely. So I'll be giving you what is the most important priority to level today. And with that being said, right after you subscribe to the channel, we get started. In Wearing Wave, you get 240 worth of energy a day called Wave Play and there's four major categories that you're going to be spending them on. EXP Material, Ascension Material, Echo Material, or finally Boss Material. Each of these give you a different material for different purposes. Forgery Challenge allow you to level up your skills, ascend your weapon past a certain breakpoint, or ascend your character past a certain breakpoint. Simulation Field provide you material that level up your weapon or level up your character in a large quantity. Boss Challenge also give you material that level up your characters or weapon, but a lot less. But the more important one is that it gives you special material that allow you to ascend your characters. And finally, Tactical Field allow you to obtain new Echo, level up your Echoes by providing Echo EXP material, or it gives you Tuner, which allows you to unlock Echo substats. For your early game, highly recommend to target Forgery Challenge as well as Boss Challenge because these materials are hard to acquire. Simulation Field gives you a lot of EXT material, but you can find these easily by playing the open world, finding them in chests, so it's not worth spending your energy on. And finally, Tactical Field is extremely inefficient to farm early in the game and it's only recommended to farm once you have unlocked the high level version of them, which is at the end game. When you click on your character skill or when you're leveling the characters, it will tell you exactly what material you're going to need to break them past a certain point, and so just look for that specific material. When you start leveling character past level 40, they're going to require you boss material. It is pretty little, so just make sure you count the exact amount you need, or you can just go farm for them when you do need them. Another material that you might find yourself needing is going to be the weekly boss material. Now while this costs energy to claim, it's called a weekly boss for a reason because you can only claim it 3 times a week. So once again, just check what does your characters need and just go farm for the corresponding material. The weekly boss material is used to unlock the small note above the skills. For the most part, in the very beginning of the game, you only need to care about the two in the middle. And once again, you can check what material your character need by clicking on it. Now, while you only get 240 energy a day, you can actually refill by using a wave plate replenishment or using a asteroid, and it's extremely not recommended that you do either of these when you first start playing out the game. These two are extremely hard to acquire, they'll be a lot more important later on, and you should only be using them for endgame. In fact, it is recommended that you never use asteroid to refill your wave plate because it is extremely important to use it for other things unless you really, 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 really want to, which is for the most part when you're swiping. I highly recommend you to just level your main character's rover from the beginning of the game. And there's a lot of reason why this is the case. He or she is really strong and is playable from the start. The main character rover actually have two different forms, the spectra form and the havoc form. But their level as well as the weapon is actually shared. So you only have to level him once and then you can play both form at the highest level. But do know that their skills is actually not shared so you have to re-level the skill when you switch form. You unlock the Havoc form after you completed the story with the Dreamless Battle. But more importantly is that the Spectrum Rover is one of the 7 characters that is available for Elusive Roam. So Elusive Roam is one of the endgame game mode that only available to certain characters and it will give you a lot of material. So just by leveling Rover, you get a really strong character to play there as well and that gives you more material later on. Rover is just really efficient to level while being really strong at the beginning, also because of the free sequence upgrade that you get for the main character's Rover. So again, highly recommend to just level Rover from the very very beginning of the game. The other characters that are available for you from the beginning of the game are Baiji, Chixia, Yang Yang from the beginning of the game, Soiha after the lock-in bonus, and finally Yanwu after you beat the tower. What you can do from the beginning of the game is to do Rover plus Yang Yang plus Baiji as a team together, but I wouldn't recommend you to level Yang Yang and Baiji just because I think they don't scale that well. 
In fact, if you need a second DPS, then I will recommend you to level Sway her because she also uses the sword and she's relatively strong. But let's talk about a more important topic, and that is, do you need to level more than one character? A lot of people will tell you that the end game requires three teams, so you will need nine characters, three characters for each team. However, I think that's completely false, and you shouldn't be doing that from the very beginning. In fact, from the very beginning, I only recommend you to level your know, one main characters, and at most, one and a half main characters. Running a team of three in this game is extremely inefficient in terms of resource until you hit end game. For the most part, I would only recommend you running team of two at the beginning of the game, consisting of one damage dealer and hopefully one support. In fact, my recommendation is actually to super invest into one main DPS and then invest into a secondary damage dealer, and that's all you need for now. For the majority of the game, you only need your one damage dealer. That includes beating the harder content of the game hologram. Only time you need more than one damage dealer is for the tower, and it's extremely unrealistic to expect yourself to be able to beat all three tower at the beginning of the game, because the last tower have level 100 enemy, and you will not get there until way, 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 way later. You want to first make sure you can beat the experimental zone first, which means you need two teams or two DPS. But there's actually another trick here, and that is you can use the same DPS for the hardest floor for each of these two towers in Experimental Zone. If you position your characters like this, you'll see that you can actually use the same characters for the harder floor on both towers, which means that it is possible to highly invest into one character while investing into your secondary character a little bit less. My point here is, do not try to do something like evenly distribute resource into three characters because you heard you need three teams. No, just pour most of the resource into one character and then maybe a little bit to your secondary DPS characters and that's it. The final thing to make your character strong and invest into are going to be Echoes. These are your stats and they're going to be one of the main things that you look for in the beginning of the game. When it comes down to leveling your character's echo, I would not level anything that's green or blue color. But if you have a good purple color one that has something like crit rate and attack, then it's considerable to level them. For the early game, it's fine to just use crit stats, attack stat, or damage stat that matches your element. So for example, if you're an arrow damage dealer and you have a arrow damage percent line on your free cost echo, then it's fine to use them. For your support characters, just give them whatever it needs to get the 5-piece Moonlight Cloud effect. You don't have to care about what echo stat they have, you don't have to care about to actually level them. Just put 5 pieces of the Moonlight Cloud on your support and you're basically ready to go, which makes them extremely easy to build. This is one of the biggest reasons why it is recommended to only play 2 characters at the beginning in your team, because it makes it a lot easier to proc intro and outro consistently, which keep on giving you that buff and it's extremely resource efficient while giving you a bunch of damage. This is the fastest, easiest, cheapest way to get damage, and you just put all your resources into your main DPS. Investing only in one character lets you beat pretty much 80 to 90% of the game, including majority of the hologram. And this completely complete your mid game until you hit end game where you actually need to start building other characters. To be really honest, only when you hit unit level 50, that's when you really enter the end game, and that's when you really need to level all the other characters, like the third characters for your party, as well as your third main DPS or just your third party in general. But at that point, you're going to be having a lot of resources, so it's less important to pick and choose, but rather just do whatever you need the most. But for the most part, early game is where the resources really matter. And again, highly recommend to farm for skill material only or boss material when you need it. Highly recommend to level the main characters rover if you don't know exactly who to level i do have a tier list going over the general characters but let me just run over each of the characters very quickly from the top to bottom starting off with danji if you have danji i will invest into danji as your second dps right away she's the most broken dps in the game but be careful because she's really hard to play so might not be suitable for casual Yinin is not going to be available from the beginning of the game. Verena is really good to put in the party, but you don't have to invest into her. Just bring her to like level 50, unlock her first passive, give her the Moonlight support set, done. Don't need to put too many resources into her. Rover, talked about many times, highly recommend to level the main characters. Really strong, cheap, easy to build. Yanwu, he is kind of a support character, so once again, I wouldn't pour resources into him from the very beginning, and I'll just skip over. Um, 
Alto is okay if you're playing him as a main DPS. If you're playing him as a sub DPS, then wouldn't regularly recommend pouring resources into him. Um, in fact, in general, I only recommend you to put resources into your main DPS, which means the characters you're going to be attacking for the most part. The same goes with Mortify. Even though this character is really good, he's more of a sub DPS or secondary characters. So I wouldn't invest into him from the very beginning. Prioritize investing into your main DPS first. Then later, when you hit endgame, when you have spare resource, you can invest into other characters that are sub DPS or support. Tosharo, main DPS, can invest him when you get him, it's fine. Uh, Encore, it's a little weird. If you are going to choose Encore as your main DPS, then I guess you could invest into Encore for the exact same reason as all the other characters. Same go for Jin Yan, same go for Sonha. If you don't have any other characters of your choosing as a DPS, then I think Sonha is a very, very good DPS to invest into. She's free, available for logging in for five days. She uses a sword, which is really, really good because ideally you pick the five star sword from your guaranteed five star weapon, and that's it. All the other characters are okay to invest in uh ling yang if you get him after the buff he's actually pretty good now so he actually do a lot of damage it's another fine main defense to invest into and the same go with jun shin if you're choosing her as your main dps now uh, personally i'm not a big fan of using this character as a dps so it's not a priority for me to invest into uh, but otherwise that's how i would treat every character in this list that's it have fun in the morning wave bye bye